Um, so I was, we were talking about the fulfillment. We were talking about, uh, and this does, everything I've said really doesn't just apply to the altar of incense. It applies to pretty much everything in the Old Testament that Jesus is the fulfillment of that. <clears throat> but particularly as we see in the book of Hebrews, boy, the priesthood, the offerings, the covenant itself, the temple, the stuff in the temple, you know. Um, and so there is an understanding of all of this stuff. But it is not sufficient just to point to it and say Jesus fulfills that. We are the temple now. And we are the place that he wants to fulfill being the altar of incense and being the, the brazen altar and being all the different, the table of showbread and being the bread of life and all of that. <clears throat> so, um, you know, and, and, and we're the priests of God. We're God's priests. We're according to the New, the New Testament. We are New Testament priests. And, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how seriously we take all of that. I don't know if at times we're dull of hearing, hearing that. Because, I, and I just, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about the, <clears throat> the priests who were called of God to be priests. And then they would take different positions as with, with John the Baptist's father. He was his time to take care of the altar of incense. And, and um, you know, in a real way, it was his time to, to be involved with the altar of incense. And there's a great story in all that, and who knows if we'll ever get to any of that. But um, uh, <clears throat> for them, I'm sure that it was an incredible privilege and blessing to be considered a priest. And, um, you know, we've talked about it over the years, but I just wonder how many of us have ever really just said, you know what? This is an honor, and this, there is something to this. Because, you know, these priests, they did this. I mean, everything was daily. You know that, don't you? Perpetual. I mean, all the offerings and all of that. It was, it was like your responsibility <laughs> is to do this and to release this and to have this going over the people and, you know, this sort of thing. And, and um and I think that, was, that many times we get a witness of that. <clears throat> we get a witness of that, but then we go away and forget what manner of man we are, and we never pursue the, the holiness of that or the, the sacredness, I think is a better word, the sacredness of all of that, that if, if we as priests aren't doing these activities by Christ, bringing forth the, the sweet incense of Jesus, you know, we read that over in Corinthians, Second Corinthians, where it says, that for you are a sweet savor of Christ. So we just go, oh, well, then it's just the way I am because I'm, you know, just because I'm a Christian, I'm a sweet savor of Christ, you know. And, and uh, no, no, there's a, there is reality. There is fulfillment reality that is supposed to fill full these things. And it is the pattern that we're supposed to make all things according to whether it be our, our temple um, before the Lord or the church being the temple of God before the Lord. These are all um, sacred trusts that we've been given. And um, so I just, you know, I just wonder if, if it's possible that we can grow dull uh, and things like that can just roll over us and really not, you know, not get the, again, the sacredness of that and the, 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 the tremendous honor, honestly, to be called a priest and to be one of God's priests among God's people. And I know everyone is, but I mean, one of God's priests among God's people. And to, and to priest our way, that would be our ministry, you see. I mean, take, if, if we were called to take care of children, we'll, you know, and have a children's church or something like that, well, that's not perpetual. But to be a priest is perpetual. Every morning, every night, and they always, there was all this stuff that was constantly uh, aware. They were aware of it. They were aware of it. 
and they knew what they were doing. And um, so, so I've used five minutes of my 20 minutes just to talk about nothing that's in my notes. But you know, I just, I don't know, I just, I care. I care about that the Lord, you know, the, it's like they were priests unto the Lord. They were the ones who brought the Lord what he wanted. They were priests unto the Lord. Uh, they weren't just priests unto the ministry of Israel. They were priests unto the Lord. And they, they, uh, they knew their duties, but do we know the fulfillment of that and allowing Christ to bring forth those things within us? perpetually um, anyway okay uh, so uh, we were talking about the two altars the brazen altar and the altar of incense and I wrote uh, the altars seem to have a straight line to God because sacrifice was so prevalent in Israel it was what was being offered and went into death that was accepted and the offer was only accepted in the beloved or in the offering. Uh, I don't know that we see um, that offering that we would offer as a priest back then or now as the beloved. We would see it as uh, something that we killed, something that died for us. Do you understand that, that there is that? that we wouldn't see that, that sacrifice as beloved to the Father. Uh, and, and, but they did see that they were accepted in it or not in it, but certainly because it died, which, is, which really describes Christianity instead of the new covenant where we are accepted in this offering, not just because of it, but in it. We are found. We are found acceptable to God, and and as our attitude as a priest, that's that's beloved under the Father. That's not just Jesus died for me and praise God, uh, Lord forgive me of my sins and I did wrong and you know this and that. But you know, um, again, I think that we we become disjointed from the the reality, the line of true reality. And we fall into religious paths, and it's real easy to become dull. It's real easy to become uh, passive. It's real easy to, to think that we've heard all this before. And, and, you know, the truth is I don't guess we've ever really heard it until it's working in us. I mean, the proof that we've heard it is that it, it's working in us, you know. And, and, you know, pursuing, you know, Lord, I don't ever want to refer to you dying for me, and therefore I'm just forgiven or whatever. Um, uh, as just that you, you know, well, Jesus died for that, and so da, da da da. I want to see that you are the beloved that gave yourself to the Father, and my only acceptance isn't because of that, but because you went beyond that and you made me one with you, and you took me into that, you brought me through, you carried me, and and to find that as a real reality, you know, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. <clears throat> the incense, different from the brazen altar, the incense was worship in heavenly places. All of it had to do with how God wanted to be related to. Um, in Exodus 30, verse 10, we find that all of the heavenly reality that the altar of incense brought was due to what first happened at the brazen altar. And basically that scripture <clears throat> describes something that I'll probably bring up several times as we go through the altar of incense. Um, it describes um, blood and fire, blood and fire, lamb blood. And it was, you know, the blood, the, the, the blood of the, the thing that was killed was taken and rubbed on the altar and on the, the, the horns of the altar. And the coals and the fire were taken from 
the altar, the brazen altar. That's where the fire came from above. See, and here's the, here's the process. That, that first sacrifice that they offered when they became priests and God told them how to be with him. He didn't tell them how to do the priesthood. He taught them how to be with him and what was important to him. And so they did it. And so to see if that was of God, fire fell and burned up the sacrifice. Fire, you know. It, 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 it took away. It didn't add. It took away, but it added to them. And, and that fire that fell, they took, they were supposed to take from the fire and from the coals and they brought it into the holy place, into here, and they, that became the, the fire that lit the coals that they had there. And they, that fire was perpetual. They never let that fire go out. The fire from off the brazen altar that lit the incense that brought a sweet savor to God. And it's, and it's so the altar of incense owes everything to the brazen altar, if you will, because that original fire. And so, so it's like this. It's like, here's the brazen altar over here. Here's heaven, or here's where God is above as it were and he lets what's in him and the belief of everything that it, that is that he is about which is altars fall to the earth burn up that sacrifice and they were to they were to honor that and to be the protector of uh, did you ever see a, a movie called the protectors of fire or something like that a bunch of cavemen and it was a whole story of how they they you know lightning struck and they got some fire and they had to keep it going for all generations because <laughs> they didn't know how to make fire you know what i mean and uh, well this is the priest they're th but that but it's a sacred thing again they're taking they're taking the death of the cross they're taking that reality and we find that we become the carriers because second corinthians says that that we become a sweet savor of christ to them that perish and to them that are saved we carry that in us that fire from the brazen altar uh, uh, that flame maybe that flame that burns in us that releases the fragrance of christ okay or we can just be christians and go around and witness Amen. We can just be, you know, we can just say, okay, well, uh, let me tell you about what happened here, and give verbal, you know, obeisance to to something that is living, a living flame, a living reality, a living sacrifice, and so, so once you get in here. This is where it starts, and I mentioned this when we first got into the candlestick. This starts pertaining to us. This starts including us. The seven branch candlestick, do you remember that Jesus stood in the midst of the seven churches, and seven is the number of completion, and that that represented the, the, the candlesticks and the, and the seven branch candlestick and the bread of life and those things that we've discussed and so but they all affect us they're not just they're not just independent things that jesus did two thousand years ago and therefore we don't we don't have to think about them again and we oh jesus took care of everything jesus oh i don't even understand it i don't you know and yet the fact that he calls us all priests means we're supposed to understand but we're not just supposed to understand it. See, we're not talking about academics here. We're talking about <clears throat> that he entrusted us with the things of his heart that are important, and we're supposed to go, as it were, I'll just say it like this, not that this counts, but I, we'll go to the old covenant here on the brazen altar, and we take it into us, and we make it new covenant. And it's always Christ, but, but it is, it is definitely this process. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot more to be said about proving that the altar of incense relates to us, but I don't know. 
We certainly won't get it to it tonight. Uh, Uh, it pictures the greatest degree of self-giving and loss for the greatest degree of self selfishness and malice. The altar does, an altar does. It pictures the greatest degree of self-giving and loss for the greatest degree of selfishness and malice. Likewise, there should be nothing that we have of spiritual value that does not have the touch of the cross or the altar accompanying it or it's unacceptable. It's just not acceptable. Okay, all right, so how, you know, so let's go back to dullness and let's go back to not really pursuing just another class or something like that. Um, <clears throat> if what's said is true, and again, it may not be, so you need to go to Jim and just tell him, I don't know if we need this guy talking anymore, but <clears throat> if it's true that, that um, Likewise, there should be nothing that we have of spiritual value that does not have the touch of the cross accompanying because that fire accompanied everything and that blood from the altar accompanied everything. It touched everything. It cleansed everything. It made everything worth something to God. That blood and that fire and the candlesticks lit by it and, you know, same flame. <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's like the altar the brazen altar, it's like that brazen altar is filling everything and touching everything and making everything alive unto God. And God is, is going, this, this pleases me. And so, okay, well, good. Old covenant, Old Testament and, and Old Covenant. Uh, but in my heart, shouldn't I want or should I not want to touch anything or to bring anything to the table that hadn't had the touch of the cross in my life. I mean, we're so busy going, you know, looking around everybody else going, you need the cross, you know, you, you know, <laughs> you're, you got lots of problems and you're, you know, this and that and whatever. I'm telling you, there's enough junk in me where I need Jesus that I don't have time to really think, you know, at best may I, Allow that to work in me so that his death works in me so that so others get him. So that others get him. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> oh, I, you know, I just wish the Holy Spirit could just give us a little flash right now of the absolute enormous amount of junk each of us have in ourselves. And yet we take the time to notice more how much other people, and we do, we do that, we do do that, we do. And, and uh, you know, what, what, what word could you use of such an astounding thing in the face of God? I mean, God, you know, because we are in the presence of God always. And he's in us, so we subject him to all kinds of stuff. But, <clears throat> You know, that's this, I'm, my Bible's still open there. Uh, uh, and be ye kind and tender hearted. Wow. Come on. Tender hearted? Well, there's the problem right there. <laughs> we're, we're not tender hearted. Our heart is not tender. Our heart is, we have malice. That's, that's right there. With all, to, to Put away from you anger and clamor and evil speaking and bitterness and wrath with all malice. That's where the malice should be going. And that, does that make sense? That we should, I am dedicated to this, but it's not dedicated to doing that without it being the, the brazen altar bringing forth the fire in me so that now um, and, and love one another and, and be you followers as dear children, not great Christians or no, you know, knowledgeable people or people that are, I mean, we're, <clears throat> you know, we know too much. And we don't use one, you know, that, what does it say? Use only one tenth of your brain? Is that, is that what, it, well, amen. <laughs> amen to that. <laughs> but we only use one, you know, one, 
one-tenth of one percent of one whatever of what we know. We know too much. <clears throat> but we don't know Jesus in all of that. And if we know Jesus, we only know it as a doctrine or as a teaching, and we don't know his spirit. We don't know what spirit we're of in knowing that. You know, so that that actually puffs us up and makes us think we're something, which is adding leaven to the bread. Remember the bread, anybody? The, altar, the, the table of show bread? We're, we're adding leaven to that, and then sure enough, we start rising in it, and God says, no leaven to me. You're part of me, and you're, you know, I'm the bread of life, but yet you're sitting there partaking of it, and it's causing you to rise. <clears throat> well, anyway, let me, Lord willing, let me at least just one last sentence. Our altars mean nothing to God unless all is based on his death and ours with him. No need having an altar unless it's, there's death. That's the point. And and no need having an altar unless um, God smells the, the morning and the evening sacrifice and it smells good to him. And God smells the incense that's being burned up, you know, being given. And he, it pleases him. It pleases him. Anybody want to please God? <laughs> I think I just told us how. All right, we're, we're done.